So, uh, good afternoon, dear speakers and dear participants of the session. We appreciate that you have found the time in this tight schedule of the Union Conference uh, for the session organized by the ICF Alliance for Public Health uh, on uh, cooperation between the parliamentarians and the civil society to eradicate tuberculosis. As you know, uh, the parliamentarians are the people who shape the policies, who make budget decisions, and that is why their role in uh, eliminating the disease is hard to overestimate. On the other hand, civil society and the community of people affected by tuberculosis better than anyone know about the relevant uh, up-to-date problems in the area of tuberculosis. That is why cooperation of the MPs and the civil society might be the recipe to substantially accelerate the elimination of the disease. Now I'm giving the floor to the first speaker that we have, Zahidul Islam, Director of the Supply and Procurement Department of the International Charitable Foundation Alliance for Public Health to tell us about the experience of work of the Ukrainian parliamentarian so good morning uh, alexandra good morning all uh, the panelists and uh, and all the viewers so uh maybe next slide alex uh, please so usually i think we as we do not in the community connect presentation is more like you know speaking and just kind of interaction with each other since we are this year we are having this presentation online i think we will do it in a presentation mode so i think which is then people can look at it uh, later on so and today i will be kind of uh, talking about uh, the collaboration between parliamentary platform in Ukraine and the civil societies and how it works. Next slide, please. So TV parliamentary platform, what it is and how it is created. So we actually, I remember that I was actually in that union conference in the 45th union conference in Barcelona when uh, that uh, declaration for uh, having coming together all the parliamentarians to fight against tuberculosis. And that was actually the day, time when we had the, uh, uh, the NTB goals were really announced by WHO. So there was kind of a need for a movement to address the TB problem. And uh, so it, at that time, the, the health minister from the South Africa and uh, the parliamentarian from UK I think, and other parliamentarians, they come together at the union conference to actually make that declaration. So that's why it is called Bar Barcelona Declaration. And following that declaration, there was a kind of platform was formed, which is a global TV caucus, in order to actually coordinate all of those uh, uh, initiatives and the movement of the parliamentarians. So that's how, as far as I'm concerned, that's how the movement kind of generated. Now, I think there are many countries where we have parliamentarians and parliamentary platform who is trying to actually address the TB issues. Next slide, please. So coming to Ukraine, I mean, we, uh, how we come to form the parliamentary platform. Ukraine in the Eastern Europe and Central Asian region is one of the countries where civil society is very active. So having that active society, civil society platform, I think it was an idea from the Global TV Caucus to have a liaison organization in, the, in Ukraine, so who could actually uh, uh, work with the sort of development and work with the parliamentary platform. So Alliance for Public Health was actually selected as a representative for uh, civil society uh, and Following that, I think we had a visit from a uh, UK parliamentarian, uh, Baroness Sati, under which also it was kind of parliamentarians from uh, Ukraine was mobilized so that, you know, we could form this parliamentary platform in Ukraine. And uh, so the 
the idea is that we have to actually translate the Barcelona uh, uh, declaration and ask sort of convince number of parliamentarians to agree with this uh, Barcelona declaration and create that platform. So we had one of the first champion was Sergei Kiral, who actually kind of liked the idea and he thought, yes, that was the right thing to do. So under that, uh, you know, we had about 50 parliamentarians signed into the declaration and we had actually supported registration of the parliamentary platform back then. So that's how it was created. And now I think it's the second phase and this platform is still ongoing. So next slide, please. So the way it works, the parliamentary platform, actually, so the platform is a sort of, under the parliament is a legal platform, legal base, and which, as I was saying, even now, I think more than 50 uh, uh, member of parliaments which sort of endorse and part of that group. And uh, so Alliance for Public Health actually provide support as a core for this parliamentary platform coordination committee. So we provide as a, you know, uh, technical support, for example, any TV related technical issues the committee needs to work on. So Alliance will provide their support. And any information that needs to be going out of the parliamentary platform, managing a website, Facebook pages, so, you know, kind of amplifying messages which parliamentary platform want to amplify, Alliance support that. And uh, so how does it work? So we have actually, usually would be in consultation with the communities, civil society organization and uh, international organization. So if there are any, you know, access to TB program barriers, legal issues, that should be actually pushed at the higher level. That would be the topic for parliamentary platform to actually uh, take on and advocate and you know, work within the parliamentary and colleagues to bring in their buy-in in order for that policy to be implemented in the country. So, uh, so for that parliamentary platform would discuss with the civil society and communities first, and then present that to the parliamentary and different committees and the forms, and even maybe hearing if needed in order to uh, uh, pass any uh, regulation or legislative changes. So, uh, I mean, we have had good experiences and we are going through the new parliamentary and committee at the moment. So we are actually getting into our sort of, you know, collaboration sort of setting our uh, uh, you know, sort of working platform, if you like. So, you know, that's currently we are at that stage, but generally it's a very good experience. Next slide, please. So, I mean, I just don't want to make, there are many more things we can say what we have done so far and, you know, activities over the last three years and et cetera. So usually we have done, you know, uh, bigger events like on TV, World TV Days and different, you know, uh, round table meetings and et cetera, et cetera. But I just, considering the time and uh, activities are there, but I think the key lessons learned in order for us to engage the parliamentarians in each of the country and fighting the TB together with the community and the policymakers, I think one of the key issues I would say, parliamentarians, they are policymakers. They need to be willing to be part of the group, part of it. And there has to be a leadership. Without leadership, I think it is very difficult to you know, move things forward. So we, every time we look at the parliamentary platform, we need to find the champion, we need to find the leaders within the parliamentarians so that we could actually feel the need to change the situation of TB in their own countries. And Another thing is that, you know, most of the parliamentarians, they are not a medical doctor, they are not an NGO worker, so they do not have really that much knowledge about what is TB and how TB affects social lives and everything. They might hear, but that's why it is imperative, any country who has a parliamentary platform, I think they are provided with this technical support so that, you know, they can talk about this issue, the problematic issues, the barriers, whatever, the policy issues that they should be, you know, advocating, they should have adequate knowledge and information so that they can actually take that information into the higher level. 
And once we can create that sort of, you know, uh, technical uh, uh, background and provided them with the knowledge, I think they can serve as a catalyst for change because they get passionate when they understand the topics, how it is, and ending TV by 2030, we, is 20, we have 10 years left, but every country is struggling with the new TB infections, MDR TB, and especially in this region. So I think we can have, you know, this platform as making changes for, for future. And also we, it is important to keep connection with the Global TB Caucus because there are many issues, maybe what we are facing in one country, maybe there are similar problems in different countries. So having that collaboration with the Global TB Caucus, we can actually get sort of, you know, understanding what other countries are doing and also maybe share some knowledge and experience to apply in each individual countries. And as for, you know, identifying what are the key issues to be advocating, I think the civil society is a key partner. And, and the affected community, TB people, they are the key partner in getting messages that what needs to be actually uh, uh, advocated, what needs to change. For those, I think we need to, the, every country should be collaborating with the civil society and communities so that effective changes can happen. And you know, whatever we are presenting as a policy change, it has a meaning. So I think these are kind of few things that I wanted to share. So I think there are many issues that we can maybe talk about, but I would just stop here and, uh, and hope that other countries would be also willing to, you know, make that engagement. And at the same time, I will thank our parliamentarian uh, for their cooperation. So thank you very much. Thank you. There's a head. And I have a question. Tell us, please. We know that uh, uh, to be an elementary platform in Ukraine was named by WHO one of the best practices for consolidation of cross sectoral efforts in fighting tuberculosis. Uh, so, has the platform been able to maintain that status and uh, keep up to date with uh, the TB in terms of the current um, COVID pandemic? Oh, sorry. So uh, I think, yes, uh, it's, it's possible. I think the, uh, the higher engagement with the parliamentarians will help because at the moment we are seeing quite a lot of problem in TB due to COVID pandemic and, you know, the services which are supposed to be provided and uh, it is not maybe adequately provided because the resources from TB is, uh, you know, diluted elsewhere not only in ukraine i think many countries having the same problem that you know the existing program resources are being depleted because the covid emergencies and everything so i think we are going to uh, i mean the parliamentarian needs to understand that the resources from tv is moving elsewhere so if we can make them understand i think we can have have them you know uh, together with the who uh, I think it can be, uh, advocacy can be done to have more resources for TB program and not actually taking the resources away from TB program. So, and, and for, for the good practice compendium for the WHO, I think it is WHO have acknowledged for the region, but I'm just simply hope that maybe many other countries will look at the compendium and the best practice and maybe try to apply it. Thank you. Thank you for your response. And I'd like to give the floor right now to the next speaker that we have, uh, Mr. Jashmet Murtazakulov, who is the member of the parliament of Tajikistan and also the head of the national uh, TB caucus uh, in uh, Tajikistan. And also, he is a co-chair of the Global Caucus to Fight TB in the ICA region. Please, Mr. Jamshed. Thank you very much. Alexandra, and you've been introducing me for so long that uh, I feel so much responsible now. Before starting, I'd like to thank uh, Zahud al-Islam for making my job easier 
because we need to agree that if uh, there is no political will, there would be no po political platform. And I'd like to agree with Mrs. Vasilenka in that this platform, the cooperation between the MPs and civil society, is one of the key ways to achieve the goal that we have all set at the high level. Uh, I agree to that. And that is why I'm going to talk about the cooperation between the parliament and the civil society and success story of Tajikistan. The next slide, please. We need to note that today the parliament of the Republic of Tajikistan, as Mr. Islam has said, yes, how it was created, it was created after the Baroness uh, visited us, uh, Baroness Sati, who, through the embassy of the UK in Tajikistan, approached uh, us with a formal letter and we learned about uh, the Global TB Caucus and its work. We need also to note that, that this initiative was uh, supported a lot by Oksana Dementi, who was an expert on a different part of legislation, a limitation or restriction of uh, tobacco smoking in Tajikistan. But when we had a personal discussion in uh, the parliament, uh, we came up with this idea to create a national TB caucus uh, in uh, Tajikistan. And today I'd like to use this opportunity and say a word of thanks to both the Baroness and Oksana Damenti for this uh, opportunity for the MPs of Tajikistan. I'd like to say a few words also about how the National TB Caucus in Tajikistan works. In Tajikistan the parliament operates uh, in under a two-house uh, system and the l lower house is uh, called the House of Representatives and I will not be speaking much about the electoral system but it's a standing uh, house and it's fifth and sixth convocation uh, which has had uh, this uh, caucus consisting of 11 members, 11 MPs who have signed and uh, support the Bologna uh, TB declaration. It was created in 2015. I'd like to say a few words about uh, the experience that we have had in Tajikistan with the civil society and I think that this is uh, the support that I have uh, enjoyed uh, in my activities from civil society, it was uh, very important for the success that we have achieved uh, and we uh, also look at the experience of other countries, we learn from them and uh, we make some conclusions with regard to our own legislation. Uh, we know that, that personal contacts and information sharing uh, are very important uh, and learning about the Global TB Caucus uh, that, that was uh, provided uh, to us uh, by uh, Baroness and Oksana Damenti and uh, that means that we need also to do something like that so that other uh, parliamentary other countries learned uh, about the caucus, uh, the places where they still don't have their national caucuses. And yes, me and Alessia, we have uh, committed to work with uh, the MPs from Uzbekistan, where they have recently had uh, parliamentary elections, and we work to help them to create their national TB caucus. Uh, in the Parliament of Tajikistan, we also have the National uh, Committee for uh, uh, Population and the TB Commission is a part of this National Committee. Uh, it really has a high status because it is chaired by one of the deputies of the Speaker of the Parliament of Tajikistan. They have monthly meetings. And well, I'm not mean. I don't mean that we discuss tuberculosis uh, uh, specifically every month, but it's one of the key topics 
and uh, we raised certain issues and in 2018 with the support of the civil society we had uh, parliamentary hearings on tuberculosis and uh, drafted uh, an action plan for the government uh, the government uh, is accountable for performing under this plan before the parliament and that was the first great success. The fact that we, together with the civil society, have been able to make such a great work. All the uh, stakeholders, agencies, ministries were invited to the parliamentary hearings and we included a lot of activities in the action plan for the government. And uh, the second thing that we did is that uh, as a part of the delegation of the Global Caucus, we visited Belarus. And that was experience sharing that, that is very important. And a lot of things that I saw in Belarus, we now having some understanding uh, and start implementing these things. Uh, people who need to deal with uh, this problem, they need to know from the experience of other countries how uh, it's done elsewhere. So learning from the experience of other countries and implementing the best practices in the national uh, legislation with certain adaptation, because the mentalities are different and the budget may be different, so political structure uh, the differs as well. but. Uh, we can still implement a lot and uh, learning from the experience of other countries uh, really made an impact on me when we went to Belarus, when we went to Kyiv, when we learned from those two countries. Uh, that was a great uh, lesson uh, to me to learn more about how we should fight tuberculosis. And in 2019 I took part in the regional summit of the Eastern Europe and Central Asia region in Kyiv, participated by the MPs, and we had meetings in Belarus with local members of the parliament, and uh, this year a lot of uh, regional meetings uh, were held in online format, and uh, today's COVID uh, did not uh, interfere with us, uh, with our work. And on the 22nd of September we had a meeting, and then on the 12th of October we had an online conference on this and I also shared the experience of Tajikistan. Uh, also we... Yes, the next slide. This is uh, an absolute success that we had when the TB caucus wrote a letter through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan and we created the national resolution for the Republic of Tajikistan on COVID-19 and its impact on tuberculosis. And you see our signatures here. We received, and all stakeholders received from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, from the ministries to the hospitals, uh, they received uh, an instruction from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, an instruction that was mandatory to uh, be implemented uh, on all levels. So that, so that was something produced by the parliament uh, considering the national mentality and it was signed by the members of the caucus. So this is one of the most important documents that we now have. That's the national resolution. And it's really great to see that the ministries uh, have received this letter and after the parliamentarians of uh, Tajikistan uh, committed to this, uh, they like, felt a good support and I think that it is interesting and uh, the civil society is also uh, feeling this uh, difference in attitude uh, and in uh, the parliament uh, we have good um, cooperation with the Stop TB Partnership, headed by Safar Naima, former uh, TB survivor, and uh, he, he has been cured, and now he dedicates his life to uh, TB response and uh, supporting people affected by tuberculosis. And uh, Stop TB Partnership in Tajikistan was actually the initiator of the parliamentary hearing, so I'd like to say thanks to uh, this uh, partnership as well. 
Maybe there were many NGOs of this sort in Tajikistan, but this partnership was the most active and through them I uh, get up to date important information about uh, the situation with TB response in the country. And uh, these data helped me this uh, week to have a meeting with the country, with the director of the country office in Tajikistan, the office of WHO, and we had a, a detailed discussion uh, about uh, funding the TB response in view of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And now the public authorities, they already know about this NGO uh, Stop TB Partnership, and that is why they are willing to cooperate. Next slide, please. Uh, developing and supporting these activities, uh, what did it give to us? Yeah, I think that we have achieved uh, a success, but we should not rest on the laurels. Uh, we should continue with our efforts, we should carry on the work, uh, we should work further with the civil society and the issues that uh, are still before us on a daily or monthly basis and one of these uh, ways to work with that is through the budget. Okay, we now have the draft budget of uh, Tajikistan for 2021 and we need to do monitoring the, to see to it that uh, the funding of uh, TB patients is not reduced next year because of COVID-19. Uh, we are really happy to inform that uh, the, Tajikistan, the Republic of Tajikistan found a way to keep up funding of uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, regardless of increased costs um, for COVID response. Uh, so all the funding of TB was targeted and uh, remains uh, so. Uh, so we heard some rumors uh, that some Central Asian uh, countries said that all the money for tuberculosis uh, were actually sent uh, to fight uh, COVID-19. Uh, luckily, and with the political support of the leader of a nation, uh, the funding is still there and uh, the funding to fight COVID-19 is sponsored by additional donors and additional investors and uh, the TB patients uh, will be unaffected by the situation. And of course, another mechanism is to create such a controlling body to supervise the way the money is spent. And I'd like to say that currently the government is discussing the concept of uh, uh, social uh, contracting. That's a new concept for us. And so that means that the government follows uh, the international best practices of cooperation with uh, civil society, where civil society is a partner in TP response. Of course, it's still being drafted, this concept, but uh, it is important that it is being discussed already with the civil society, and that's a great experience. And one of the positives here is that the government is willing to uh, provide tax exemption to the regional legal entities so that the money, money could be uh, sent to fight tuberculosis. And uh, another good thing is that uh, the day before yesterday I spoke at a different uh, conference on road safety and it was uh, very interesting to see that COVID not just affected our economy, the global economy, but uh, it was also the source of some good lessons and it was great to, s to hear that now these uh, measures that we have like masks and uh, hand sterilization uh, those measures have reduced uh, the incidence of tuberculosis into, uh, into Tajikistan by 40 percent 
uh, according to the mi deputy minister of health uh, who is responsible for that thank you very much uh, mr jamshed i am really sorry to interrupt you uh, thank you for your presentation and sharing the great experience of tajikistan and uh, the way that you support uh, creating caucuses in other countries of course the COVID uh, problem affected all uh, the areas of life and we need to discuss its impact on tuberculosis maybe in separate sessions or even conferences but unfortunately we cannot uh, talk about that in detail at the moment i thank you very much for your detailed presentation of your work and maybe about the work of other caucuses in the ICA regions. Uh, we will hear about uh, that from Alisa Matusevich, uh, manager uh, of uh, Global TV. Uh, dear Caucus. colleagues, I will perform my presentation in English, so just a minute I will share my screen with you. Um, so, I'm here represent a Global TB Caucus as a regional manager of ICA region and as well as CISO manager in Africa and Asia Pacific region. Uh, I have experience of working with members of parliament around eight years uh, before I worked in the parliament of Ukraine for about five years. Uh, as an assistant of um, uh, Ukrainian platform, um, assistant to Sergei Kira. So I have a um, background of working with two sides uh, from a civil society perspective and from um, um, parliamentarians. And I will be happy to share with you some uh, tips of how to uh, leverage uh, parliamentary influence dur during the collaboration. And just a few words uh, that Global TB Caucus was launched in 2014 and uh, Mr. Luis Castro, Executive Director of the Union, offered to host and fund a meeting at the World Lung Health Conference in Barcelona. Now we have members uh, in uh, 105 uh, 15 countries uh, and with members uh, of uh, amount of 2,500 all around the world. And uh, over the last six years, the, the caucus has built an interconnected network of parliamentarians, health officials, civil society partners uh, to strengthen global health systems and improve public health infrastructures at the local, national and regional and international level. Here you can see some of our MPs. And uh, what I need to say that uh, we, oh, sorry. Uh, we, as um, uh, Global TB Caucus, exist to foster the global political will to NTB and aims to create a sustainable political response by ensuring that the network is locally based. This means that national civil society takes the lead on building relationship with the parliamentarians in their country and works with them to push for change where it is needed. Uh, so. Uh, how we engage uh, with uh, CSOs now in times of COVID when we needed uh, to reconstruct our uh, work uh, and uh, to build some connections on online platform. Uh, we provided several, like uh, Honorable Jim had said, we provided several online meetings and um, uh, a bit about structure of our work, uh, how we do this. Um, for example, this regional resolution, um, which was mentioned by Honorable Jamshed uh, on TB and COVID, uh, was developed on the Global TB Caucus Executive Committee meeting on COVID-19 and TB. Uh, so parliamentarians agreed uh, to have a statement on TB and COVID, and later, this resolution was approved by ICA uh, members of National Caucus. And uh, after, it uh, was adopted with a national specific uh, to, uh, in Tajikistan. This national resolution uh, was um, uh, discussed with CSOs. So that is how CSOs uh, can influence on uh, the national policy by uh, cooperating with uh, members of parliament on uh, such, national, uh, such national resolutions. 
Uh, as well, uh, we agreed to help. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we agreed to help some national calls. Uh, we already held it in Armenia, Belarus, Azerbaijan, Ukraine, Tajikistan. <clears throat> and uh, here, for example, I, I will show a picture uh, of Azerbaijan's national call. Uh, you can see uh, many of representatives of CSOs are represented here, as well as um, WHO of countries, um, office and Europe office, and um, uh, as well with TB patients. Participants uh, on this call were also informed on the measures taken to prevent interruptions in the anti-tuberculosis activities. So they, uh, that is how uh, we try to have more impact um, by having these online calls and inviting all uh, main national TB stakeholders in countries. Uh, some uh, small tips how uh, you can collaborate um, and uh, to have impact with collaboration um, of MPs, uh, that the 80% of your collaboration uh, can be if you have a champion MP. Uh, this champion MP, like uh, for instance our Honorable Jamashed, he is uh, very active in uh, ICA region as well in uh, his country. Uh, so that is why uh, our national uh, caucus in Tajikistan is very active as well in Ukraine. Uh, we have um, seen a very um, engaged and active um, parliamentarian, Ms. Lada Bula, who is also our um, member of uh, our co-chair of ICA region. So, um, but how to find MP? Uh, you can rely on his personal experience. Uh, maybe he has some uh, background with TB, personal experience or experience of, of some relative uh, on TB disease. Uh, some parliamentarians who are passionate about TB or have experience uh, issues on TB, for instance, he's a member of a health committee, a uh, member of uh, international committee or etc. Uh, and um, that is how parliamentarian can be, you can find parliamentarian who are engaged in health research, for example, or have a personal interest in academia. Um, but uh, as uh, Zahed um, mentioned, uh, that not all champion MP should be a, an, uh, like an expert in TB. Uh, you just need to fight a personal approach to all of them. Uh, it also can be obligation uh, to their community as uh, according to majority election system um, some MPs are representing certain part of their country. So they have a role to play in their well-being, especially the health or of their citizens. Uh, if there are important issues uh, that affect their constituencies, parliamentarians have a duty to create effective policies to solve such issues. So that is how CSOs, um, by presenting to MPs uh, with a summary TB statistics of their own constituencies or region, um, can uh, show the good uh, strategy of working with them. Uh, but keeping in mind that site briefings should be a very constructive and brief because MPs usually don't have time to read uh, long uh, documents. International. Алис, я прошу прощения, если вот вкратце подытожить буквально пару, ну, пару минут, потому что нам нужно еще последнему спикеру дать возможность. Sure, thank you so much, Alexandra. So, uh, just briefly, I will go to next slides that how you can better use the parliamentary force uh, by using deputy request, media interest, arising media interest when events are organized with MPs, involving to the working groups or drafting of laws and committee hearings. It can be relied when you have already a good cooperation uh, with MPs. Um, and uh, in, in the end, I can say uh, that all our work uh, we, as a small um, team of Global TB Caucus, we rely on our local based representatives. Um, civil society and members of community group form a, a concern of work of the caucus. And uh, that is why we are heavily rely on them. 
sorry, uh, we are really out of time and it's important to hear from Ola Klimenko, who is the head of the TB community, TB people in Ukraine. And is also the head of Stop Partnership, uh, Stop TB Partnership in Ukraine, so that she could tell us about the needs of uh, people affected by tuberculosis and their requests to the parliamentarians. Please, order. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, thank you, Alexandra, and you have already introduced me. My name is Oleg Klimenko, head of TB People of Ukraine. That's the community of people affected by tuberculosis in Ukraine, and I'm also the head of the National Stop TB uh, Partnership in Ukraine. I would like to say that I'm grateful for participation in this session. It's important for us because we can present a bit of practical side of cooperation with uh, parliamentarians and those results that can be achieved when the civil society does interact with uh, the members of parliament. So the first thing to note is I hope that in future we will be able to uh, somehow repair the situation there is now some lack of uh, cooperation between civil society and the parliament. Uh, why? Because in particular MPs are limited in their functions and in their mandate. As Mr. Jamshed uh, mentioned before this, uh, authority structures may differ. In Ukraine we have local authorities and we have national authorities. And when while interacting with uh, members of parliament, we adopt uh, some regulation at the national level. There is no um, guarantee that such rules or laws or regulations will go locally, even if the civil society has uh, strong opportunities for advocacy. And it is here where our limitations arise because uh, influence in different uh, structures of authority together with the MPs is something we cannot do because uh, the mandate of uh, MPs uh, is limited. Nevertheless, yeah, not, uh, not in all the countries uh, that they have the practice of cooperation between MPs and the civil society and there are reasons to that and so I think that there are things we can learn and uh, there, there is room for improvement and as uh, has been mentioned today uh, sharing the experience is important it's a good practice uh, because we need to teach uh, civil society activists how to work with the MPs and MPs need to be open to the civil society that's also a great step forward because it's quite risky for them because civil society always wants quick solutions, we are more motivated, we are more narrowly um, specialized, we take one disease and we want to see the changes about it right now, right away, and unfortunately it's not possible even if MPs want to help us truly uh, because of the procedures. <coughs> but what we have been able to do together with the parliamentarians uh, in the context of tuberculosis and I'm not going to speak about the awareness raising campaigns uh, because when we hold them together they bring uh, much better results uh, in uh, mainstreaming the issues or uh, fighting stigma. It's quite large scale, then, then the whole population of the country pays attention to the issue of tuberculosis uh, or other stigmatizing diseases. Uh, but we have had cases in Ukraine when we were able to achieve uh, quality step changes. Uh, working together with the MPs we were able to get funding for our activities to find tuberculosis and in our activities we always uh, try to have uh, MPs present at our meetings when we have uh, meetings in politically difficult regions where uh, they have a uh, weak political will to resolve the problem uh, of socially dangerous diseases and uh, um, access to services and in particular with regard to human rights of the patients. Yet when the civil society organizes uh, meetings uh, and uh, members of parliament uh, take part 
in those meetings, uh, it's always a guarantee of uh, presence of some true decision makers from local authorities, which uh, improves the quality of advocacy drastically. Uh, so I hope that uh, the successful practices, uh, the um, successful cases that we now see in global caucus and in the countries uh, with local national caucuses, uh, hopefully we will be able to discuss it more often on our webinars or meetings that we can hold online to strengthen this uh, interaction and to achieve achieve a more systematic uh, level of cooperation uh, not a, a sort of ad hoc uh, collaboration and that's what i would like to wish to us all and if you need some support in training uh, for your civil society organizations we are willing to share the expertise of ukraine and help with uh, the establishment of this Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ola. You've mentioned some very important things. Unfortunately, we do not have time for discussion, even though I'm sure it would have been truly interesting. I'd like to say thanks to all the speakers for your participation, all your beautiful reports, and I'm sure that uh, developing the cooperation between Parliament and civil society will go on until we eradicate tuberculosis. Finally, thank you. Goodbye, goodbye.